Hello and welcome to the first podcast, the first Common Ground Sound podcast. Um, not Don't want to be confusing right now in the Common Ground Sound podcast. I am focusing on a book I wrote called Glory and Warfare, and you'll find this um, under a Glory and Warfare Facebook page, Glory and Warfare TikTok, so on and so on. But Glory and Warfare, the book, is just a part of a bigger project called Common Ground Sound. And if you watched any of my TikToks, TikTok gives you three minutes, and so I talk really fast. <laughs> but on the podcast, I'm going to try to slow down and uh, relax and just kind of move into a deeper level of things that I'm uh, that I'm rapidly trying to squeeze into a TikTok. So I want to start by giving you the the basic purpose and message of Common Ground Sound or the Common Ground Sound Project. And uh, basically, the message is right here, which is uh, return to love. So let me explain it. I'll just kind of read this. Uh, the, the basic message and purpose is to encourage healing in relationships through a return to love among the commoners of America, beginning with bloodline family and expanding to work family, church family, uh, your friends as a family, and ultimately the family of America. That's the basic heart and message of Common Ground Sound. Um, so I, I'm, 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 I want to say that I know there are so many people talking about and giving their opinions about the state of America and the people of America right now. But as I've really prayed into this, I still believe that I'm bringing a different voice to that conversation that I'm not really hearing a lot of anyway. And um, so, so here I am. <laughs> so I want to explain also that I have used this hashtag, wake up, pray up, rise up, speak up uh, in social media and uh, on TikTok. And that is... Another, I guess that's another purpose, is that that the commoners of America, I believe we need to return to love. We need to wake up to some things. We need to pray up. We need to rise up together, and we need to speak up. And um, and then if you've watched my TikToks, you've seen that I wear these ridiculously big red glasses, and I want to explain that. Um, these represent my great-grandmother, Pearl, who is a pioneer woman uh, who, who her and my great-grandfather Homer survived both the, the, the uh, Dirty Thirties Dust Bowl and the Great Depression and had 10 children. And the story is uh, um, bookended by uh, some glory stories, but, but the story of my, my family is in this book. And uh, in this book, I, I talk about this is the story the story of the division of America as told through one family. And so I just, I just encourage you to get the book. I really believe in the message of that book. And so anyway, the glasses represent, um, I say in the book that she was kind of a naive pioneer woman, right? She was strong, but she, she, she was also naive. And you might see some of that, you know, trickle down in the blood and I might, you really come across as naive and I'll be the first one to admit that. And I just want to be open and honest with you and, and, and bring the voice that I feel called to bring to this conversation. So anyway, that's why the crazy big red glasses. Whoops, <laughs> not poke my eye out with them. Um, so I'm going to jump into what I want to talk about today. I've been talking about it a little bit on TikTok. Uh, I'm a radical follower of Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, the Father God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of the Bible. And if, if um, God tells me to do something, I, I, I do it. I follow what he says. And I don't always understand why I'm doing it, but he is so faithful. And there's always been at, at least enough evidence of why he wanted me to do it for me to totally trust uh, that walk with him. And so um, I, I was working on a project. And um, bottom line is the Lord led me to go into Washington, D.C. for the first time in my life on March 4th. And when I looked at the date, when, when I was talking to the Holy Spirit, talking to the Father about this, uh, the trucker convoy in America had not 
actually uh, risen up. It, had, it hadn't really organized. Um, but when I looked at the date of March 4th, and when I told a prayer warrior that I was supposed to go March 4th, that was the first time I heard, oh, I get it, March 4th. <laughs> So, um, you know, I hear, I hear these things. I'm like, Ooh, Lord, what are we up to? And I realized that if I, if I went into DC on March 4th, I was probably going to wind up in DC on the same weekend that the truckers were going to wind up in DC. So I, again, I wasn't sure what we were doing here and I am going to get to that. Um, I did, I did actually, uh, join the, the, the first loop with the truckers and you'll just have to hear that story. Uh, it'll be the next podcast or the next one, because I have other things that I feel I need to talk about. So, um, this didn't really totally surprise me because again, I have been using this wake up, pray up, rise up, speak up hashtags in social media since 2020. And this truck convoy was the first true uprising that I have seen in America, you know, really organized, uh, not not really organized. The the first actually organized group of people that were rising up against some things that are going on in this country. So it would make total sense that the Lord would say, "Listen, if you're going to use those hashtags, you might as well be there with them, right?" But before again, before I get to that story, I want to I want to talk about. I just have to lead up to this. So. The morning of March 4th, I was staying in a hotel uh, chain that I typically stay in and that I'm a member of, whatever. And um, I woke up the morning of March 4th. And as I was coming out of sleep, uh, just before I was totally awake in that space right there, the Lord speaks to me a lot of times. And there's a real clarity in that space for some reason. And so uh, I just naturally was realizing I'm waking up, it's March 4th, and I'm naturally begin to ask the question, hey, what are we doing? You know what? And I immediately, almost, almost in an interruption to my question, I immediately uh, have a vision of the back of my head uh, and in my hair, I hate hair by the way, but anyway, let me not rabbit trail. Anyway, in the back of my hair, um, I... The vision in the vision, I see the word C S E E cut out of my hair, and I immediately know in my knower that that means the Father, the God of the Bible, the great I am, is saying, I am, and I know every hair on your head, and I'm calling you to go into Washington, D.C. today to see some things. And this is just a typical language between me and the Lord, and I, I, I know what he means. So, um, so I head into Washington, D.C. Uh, the plan is to just go in and see whatever he wants me to see. And then I was going to go to Asheville, North Carolina and go visit some friends and all this, this fun stuff. And so um, I just wanted to go in and get this over with, right? But I get in and the Lord says, no, you're going to stay here tonight. And there was this pace about this whole trip that was just like, real easy, slow motion sort of pace and, and rhythm. And uh, uh, today the Lord said, I, I, the Father God said, I need you to get in my gate, you know, my my my, my pace. And so um, there was a lot of just waiting, a lot of waiting. But I went ahead, checked in this hotel and decided I was going to go for a walk. It was a beautiful day. I, I, I didn't even realize it, but the hotel was only a block away from the White House. I had never been to D.C. Of course, I was going to go see that. So I go to the White House, and uh, there's a little, little Ukrainian uh, protest going on, and I'll talk about that later. <clears throat> and I just take off walking. I just feel like I need to prayer walk, you know, just like, Lord, what are we doing here? And um, so I'm just sort of walking and I'm kind of, kind of walk a half a square around the White House. And then I become obsessed with seeing the Lincoln Memorial because Lincoln is a hero, I think. Who knows anymore? Anyway, <laughs> I, I wanted to see it. And so that little journey caused me to basically walk a big circle or square around the White House. And I didn't make it to the Capitol, but I, I walked this a big circle. And of course, I was praying the entire time. So what I'm trying to say is, I'm not, 
I'm, I'm, I'm not saying that, uh, uh, I didn't go and say, okay, I'm going to go pray, a, you know, walk a prayer circle around the white. It wasn't like that. It was just a following of the Lord. And then by the time I came around the Lincoln Memorial, I realized, oh, I've just made a big square. Okay. I guess maybe that's what we're doing. And as I did this and I, I, I continued to check the news on the truck, truck convoy and they didn't know what they were doing. The, the Washington did not, and the media did not know what the truckers were going to do. And I didn't know if I was going to get into traffic with them coming into DC. I didn't, you know, and, and again, I'm, I'll tell the details of that later. But anyway, what I finally decided is, you know what I think I am? I think I'm just, I'm a worshiper. That is what I, I am. I'm a musician, songwriter, and I am a worship leader and I'm a worshiper. And so, um, I just decided, okay, Lord, I know what you're up to. I'm just in here to go, um, uh, like in uh, 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 First Chronicles 22, I think it is, where the Lord, where Jehoshaphat, uh, the Lord gives Jehoshaphat a word that says, send the worshipers first, which is a crazy passage. But anyway, um, that's what it just felt like. Like, I'm just in here, just just praying. And and my, my main prayer was, let this, whatever the trucker convoy, whatever this uprising is, let it be peaceful and let it be fruitful. That just kind of was just continually my heart. Okay, so I'm telling way too much about the trucker uh, convoy. I need to move on because what I want to talk about today is uh, what I'm calling uh, seeing Biden. You might have seen that on TikTok. So what happened was I spent the night after, you know, walking that prayer circle around Washington, D.C., and the next morning, I thought that I was going to go, I was going to walk to the Capitol because that was the one, you know, main, main uh, institution that I didn't go to the day before. And I got outside on a Sunday morning in D.C. And I, I'm assuming that on a Sunday morning in D.C., there's probably not a lot of traffic anyway. But also, they had also blocked some things off because they didn't know whether the truckers were going to come into D.C., even though the truckers were making it very clear they were not going to do that. They were only going to do the loop on the outside. But they were kind of blocking some things off. And I'm sure that nobody wanted to be down there just in case they didn't want to get stuck in traffic. So it was a very, very quiet, quiet morning. And I'll go ahead and say it. It felt a little like the quiet before the storm. And I I, I really, the peace before the storm. I, I hope I'm wrong about that. And that's all I'm going to say about that right now. I pray that I'm wrong about that. But um, but I'll say this. I, I, I would ask that you would join me in prayer in that because... If they are not very, very, very careful, this will turn into what happened in, in Ukraine in 2014. And we do not want that. We do not want that. And again, I'll, I'll talk about that when I get to the convoy story. So I'm walking downtown and I know that the Lord is going to lay my eyes on some things. And so I am, you know, I have my eyes wide open and I'm in prayer and I'm walking in the spirit and I'm praying in the spirit. And I walk up to a shop window and I'll have a picture of this on here, um, a shop window, and it has a sweatshirt, much like this one. It's white, and it has the face of Biden on it. And at the bottom of it, it says it's like a bust of Biden, and it, at the bottom of it, it has, says hashtag winning. And so I, I looked at it. I even took a picture of it, and I walked away, and I said, yeah, but the problem was the entire time I was looking at it, I wasn't seeing Biden. I was seeing Obama. Now, let me explain that this is not new news to me at all, <laughs> that, that, that Biden is on the puppet strings of Obama, who is on the puppet strings of high, higher, higher ups. And um, I don't want to go too far into that because the main thing that I want to focus on today is gaslighting. OK, uh, so I'm gonna, I am going to tell this story. A thing has happened to me since I was a little girl where I will, let's just say that I meet somebody and that, that somebody is named John Doe. And I look at John Doe and I, and I tell my friends, hey, he looks just like Joe Blow. And they say, what? No, he doesn't. He doesn't look anything like Joe Blow. And I'm like, yes, he does. You don't see that. And I've had to mature in the spirit and, and realize that some of these things that happen to us are spiritual occurrences. They're spiritual gifts or they're attack, you know, they're... Um, akin to the spiritual, the parts of the spiritual giftings. And that is a, a thing of discernment that happens to me. Because what happens is if I continue to observe these two guys, the same spirit will be operating in the, both of those guys. So let's say that one of them is a skirt chaser. I can almost guarantee you, that unless, I'm, unless I'm seeing wrong and discerning wrong, that other one is a serious um, skirt chaser too. Or if one of them is a liar, so on and so on. And so uh, this it's like it's like something is superimposed, 
and um, and I'll show you a picture. There's a, there's a there's a, there's a picture of Obi of o Biden, which is what I call Biden actually, o Biden. And uh, Kim Clement had a prophecy, and he said, "How you you ask how can you have two presidents?" And a lot of people have thought that that was they've interpreted that, that Trump was still going to be the president, even though Biden is in the office and all blah blah blah. I, I think actually maybe the interpretation is that the two presidents are are Obama and Biden. Obama is still the president. Bottom line. Okay, so I want to get to gaslighting here because uh, so that. Just to kind of explain, that is just something that happens in the spirit, and I know what the Lord is is talking to me about. And I begin to pray, you know, okay, well, I, I know what that means. And again, this is nothing new. I, I knew this whole thing about Obama in 2007, 2006, 2005, because the Lord began to open my eyes to some of that. Oh, man, just crazy, crazy awesome God that we serve. But I want to move to gaslighting while we have time here. I don't want to, I want to really focus in on gaslighting. So I consider myself an expert on gaslighting. And the reason I do is because I have been experience, experiencing gaslighters uh, from childhood. And it was about seven or eight years ago that I really realized that and that I came into a full understanding of what a gaslighter actually is and what gaslighting is and um i'm going to i'm going to talk extensively in context to family relationships and gaslighting uh in a video series called come to the table but today i want to talk about it in, in in a political context okay and so the simple definition of gaslighting is the gaslighter will tell you what you want to hear in order to run a hidden agenda. Now, there's an original definition of a gaslighter, and I don't, I don't know how you have time to talk about that. But when we talk about gaslighting today, this is basically what we're talking about. It's a dishonest person who's running a hidden agenda, and they are not trustworthy. Okay, and so I'm going to drill in. I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to tell you something that may, may shock you, but this is something that I've learned about gaslighting. Only love can free. A gaslighter. That is, I, I, I stand on that. I really believe that. And I have personally failed at love with gaslighters in the past. So I'm, I feel led to share eight things that I know about gaslighters that will help you. And I want you to think about these eight things in context to Biden. And don't write me off as some bleeding heart idiot just yet. Just, just try to hear me out here. Uh, so don't think about Biden yet. Okay, we'll put it in the we'll put it in the context of Obama and the deep state and all that jazz, all all those people and the Clintons and whoever. Let's just talk about normal people, okay, that have a gaslighting problem. Now, gaslighting is caused by powers and principalities in the spirit realm. That's where this comes from. So when it, when somebody says um, she has a spirit of Jezebel, you think about Jezebel. Well, no, that's not what that means. There were powers and principalities in the spirit realm operating through Jezebel. Jezebel had some open doors uh, that were allowing this this um, this bondage to spirit realm evil powers, evil uh, spirits to operate in her life. And it's not that hard to open yourself to these things. We 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 all can do that. And so, all right, so anyway, let me get to the, I'm going to give you eight things, all right? So gaslighters are always operating out of fear. And the way that you deliver someone from fear is through love. Perfect love casts out fear. Gaslighters are always operating out of fear, deep fear. And in Biden's case, enormous fear, enormous fear. Gaslighters, number two, gaslighters are always in bondage to evil powers in the spirit realm, which is, I just said that. Number three, gaslighters believe what they're saying. You've got to understand that. Uh, number four, when a gaslighter becomes repentant, which I have witnessed uh, firsthand, when they become repentant and they begin to get set free, they still struggle with flashes of getting caught up in lies and in a split second, they begin to believe the lies again. And you get, if you're going to walk this in love with a gaslighter who truly wants to get free from gaslighting, and I have had this experience where gaslighters begin to see 
these spirits operating in their life and they say, I'm, I'm, I don't want any more to do with this. And some, some of them have lifelong relationships. Of, that, that's the right word, relationships with these spirits. Uh, they've allowed these spirits to operate since they were a little kid. It can happen so easily when you're seven years old and you need to lie and you learn how to partner with these spirits and, and become a gaslighter. So anyway, um, let me say that again. When a gaslighter becomes repentant and begins to get free, they still struggle with flashes of getting caught up in the lies. And in a split second, they begin to believe the lies and they get in a state of confusion. And it's only love and patience that can that can uh, help them come, come out and, and the power of the Holy Spirit help them come out. Okay, uh, number six or number five, sorry. Even when they have times of seeing the truth about it, because they will see the truth about it, the next lie is that the lies are for everyone's good. Now, I want you to think about that in, in the context of Biden, the Clintons, Obama, and this, but the Bible covers this. They will believe that they're doing good. All right, uh, number six, gaslighters wind up in a communication chase, which I call loop-de-loo, <laughs> because when it starts, I roll my eyes and go, here we go, loop-de-loo, here we go, loop-de-loo. Oh my gosh, okay. Um, but with experience and a lot of help from the Holy Spirit, you can remain in love. And the gaslighter will eventually find, with some patience, will find the actual truth. And this is not easy, especially when you're operating yourself in fear and hate. So if you're operating in fear and hate, you fear Biden, you fear Obama, you fear the Clintons, and you're operating in hate, and you're letting yourself use the language of hate, uh, you're, 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 you're going to have a harder time. We're all going to have a harder time if we're operating in that. And again, let's don't get to the context of them. I, I'm going to take care of that in a minute. Uh, let me go to number seven. It is extremely tempting to play the same game and just begin to gaslight the gaslighter. In other words, in a survival thing, you want to sort of just lie to them until you can sort of get away from them. You sort of trick, you know, trick, trick them into leaving you alone and, and, and you can going to kind of sneak away. Again, I'm going to talk more extensively about this later, but, um, that is a dead end. That is never going to work. You will lose yourself. You'll lose, you'll get into confusion. You'll lose the truth. You'll lose the plumb line uh, for your own life. The, the truth and the spirit of truth. You got to call, constantly call on the spirit of truth when you're dealing with gaslighters. Please hear me. You've got to constantly call on the spirit of truth who leads us in all truth when you're dealing with gaslighting and gaslighters. The last one, number eight, is there are times when it becomes absolutely necessary in order to protect yourself and in some cases protect others that you must break all ties with gaslighters or, or gaslighting. But I strongly encourage you to never lose your love for the gaslighter and never stop praying for the soul of that gaslighter to get free. Never, never, never give up on that. To use a Winston Churchill quote, um, let me go back to this. That, those are the eight things that I wanted to share about this. And I, I just want to round it out again with the return to love. Do I think we need to break ties with the o, the o Biden administration? Absolutely. We need to do that. We need to be very careful about how we go about doing that. And that is where we have to be utterly dependent on the spirit of truth to lead us in all truth or we are going to get ourselves into way more trouble than we would ever want to look back on. And uh, so who is very hard. These are frustrating things. When somebody's lying to you, it's one of the hardest things to do to try to stay in love and not get in fear and get in and get in hate. But I, I, I just want to bring it back to um, return to love, return to love. And again, yeah, you might have to set a boundary and do whatever the Lord leads us to do to remove this uh, administration. Um, and again, I cannot stress enough how careful we have to be uh, uh, and how to and how how tuned into the Holy Spirit and the Spirit of Truth we have to be to get that done.
And so I'm going to tell the last uh, story, and I told this on TikTok, but that morning after I, I saw this, and I saw something else, and so coming up next uh, in, in next week's podcast is the, the next thing I saw in a window, a shop window, and oh, I'm so excited about telling you that, telling you all about that. So anyway, um, uh, the Lord said, I want you to be sure to go to St. John's, which is, the, is known as the Church of the Presidents right across the street from the White House, and um, the priest there told a story about hitting a skunk one day, I guess on a highway, and the skunk was really, really bad. And um, it like, or, you know, eyes watering and, and just really bad. And as they were driving, he's looking in his rear view mirror and he's seeing car after car hit that same skunk and kind of going, oh, he, they hit it and they hit it. Oh, well, they hit it, they hit it. And then all of a sudden his eyes shifted. And when his eyes shifted, he could, he saw through the windshield and he was looking into the eyes of the people who were experiencing this awful skunk. And I mean, what an analogy. We have all hit a skunk. But he stopped looking at the cars hitting the skunk. And he started looking into the eyes of the people who were going through what he had just gone through or what he was still going through. And his message basically was, I think that, that, that we've lost this in America. We have stopped looking into each other's eyes with compassion and empathy and have love for each other and what we are all going through. I, I don't, uh, there's not much a better common ground sound. That's the sound of common ground. Let's look into each other's eyes, the eyes of the window of the soul. Let's look into each other's eyes, love each other, return to love as we all go through this together. All right. That's all for today. Love to all. See you next time. <music>